All right, so today what we're going to do is do the first video in a three-part series of how a prop is made. Um, so this is the upstairs of our shop. We roughly have 300 patterns, and so I just go up there and I pick the pattern that will work well with the customer's airplane and engine combination. Each one of those patterns has a coordinating template, which we pulled here. And we will use that template to trace out on the boards and then um, cut out on the bandsaw. So for this particular prop, it is going to be a three inch hub thickness. And that's what's required for an SAE one bolt pattern on this particular project. So we are going to use four laminations. Each of our boards is three quarter of an inch thick and then Katrina is just tracing it, giving ourselves a little bit of wiggle room for any mistakes we might make when it comes time to cut it on the bandsaw. And the lumber we're going to be using today is maple. That's my favorite go-to for um, props is just hard white maple. Um, I also like to add birch. Birch ha adds a little bit of color, so I do like to do that quite a bit. And then also mahogany is the third kind of wood that we use. Um, but today we're just going to use this maple for this particular prop. So, like I said, after she gets all these marked out, she's going to take it over to the bandsaw and cut each board out individually. And then we'll bring it back and we'll glue it up. So I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about this customer's project. This customer had ordered a prop from us a couple years ago, um, and he had ordered a 66 by 32. He is in California, and he thought that he, since it's hot most days and things like that, he was actually only getting 2,900 max RPM, and a Corvair engine should turn up a little higher than that, um, closer to about 3,100 RPM. So we went ahead and dropped the pitch on this particular prop to a 66 by 30. So dropping it two inches of pitch is actually going to give him 200 RPM more than he was getting before. So a lower pitch will give you higher RPM. Um, so his engine, like I said, is a Corvair engine. It is, um, it's actually a car engine. And William Wynn sells a conversion kit for these car engines so that they can be used in aircraft. So it's just a horizontally opposed air-cooled six-cylinder engine. And one of the neat things about it is it can be run on um, 100 low lead, which is the aviation fuel, or it can be run on automotive fuel. So a lot of these planes are home built, which means they are also sometimes flown off of their own personal field. So it's nice to be able to just go to the gas station and get gas for, for your airplane instead of having to go to an airport to get the special gas for your engine for your airplane. Um, also, let's see here. Like I said, that's a 100 horsepower engine and that's what I see on a lot of these peat and poles. And that's going to, for a peat and pole, it's going to give you a cruise RPM of about 25 to 2700. And then at that speed, you're going to get, or at that RPM, you're going to get roughly 75 to 80 mile an hour. So that's, that's kind of the parameters of this airplane. And now I'll go ahead and tell you a little bit about the airplane. The airplane is called a peat and pole air camper. And it's, a, it's an old design, actually. It was developed in 1929. And when they came out, originally, they actually ran a Model A Ford engine on it. And that was only 40 horsepower compared to the 100 horsepower that they have on it today. But it is kind of cool that they still are commonly run with automotive engines that were converted. So um, they are a, like I said, a home-built airplane. So most people build them in their hangar, the garage, um, by themselves. And... It's all wood construction. So you actually just buy the plans on the Peyton Pool website that I just, I just looked it up. Still, you know, you just buy plans and then you just make it out of wood. Then you cover it with fabric and put a Corvair engine on it and you've got yourself an airplane. So it's pretty neat 
little deal there. And they're one of my favorite um, planes. I build a lot of props for them, but they're just so nostalgic and they have so much character. And a lot of the home builds, when they build them, they get really into it. So they have such, um, such detail to them and they have such character that even though I may make a prop for, you know, a hundred different peat and poles, they're all so very different from, you know, the characteristics that the builder puts into them. So uh, that's one of my favorite planes to build a prop for. And so on this video, I get a lot of comments about the guard being raised so high. And the reason I do that is because when I go to cut the hub, I need all that clearance so that it doesn't catch. Um, and then generally I just leave it up because I forget to put it down. And actually we very rarely break, bake, break, I can't talk, a bandsaw blade. Um, they are actually, we manage just fine. So um, what Katrina is doing now is drilling a hole in the very center of each prop. And if you could see in the, when she was laying her template out, she tacked it all down with little nails. So this is the little nail hole that we're actually gonna go ahead and drill all the way through. And that's gonna give us our center point for the prop. Um, then we go ahead and we sand each board down to get you know anything that might be on the prop, any little bit of dirt or anything like that off and just kind of open up the wood before we put the glue on there. And we use Dynabraid Orbital Sanders. They are very, very light, which is good for us when we sand the actual shape of the prop out. You know, we sand for two or three hours at a time. So those are very lightweight, very easy to work with, and they've been really, really great for us. I think for this one, we have an 80 or 60 grit sandpaper on it, um, and it, it makes quick work of most things. So we'll just sand all those down really well, and then we will go ahead and mix our glue and get it glued up. This glue, it's, um, it's a DAP plastic weldwood resin, and I show a picture of it later on. Uh, the interesting thing about it, well, not interesting, but it has to stay, the building has to stay at 70 degrees or warmer in order for the glue to work well. So in a shop like ours, it's generally a little hard to keep this whole building at 70 degrees. So. We usually have to make a little tent thing over the press and put a little heater in it to keep everything warm. Um, so here, let's see. Um, it is a powder and you mix it with water. It's a, I usually do a 500 powder to 200 water and then I adjust it from there. So I do a lot of it by eye. I don't weigh it particularly, but I know what it should look like. Um, I've been doing it for 10 years or more now. Yeah, like 15 years. So I have a pretty good idea of how I like it to look. Um, and I got asked if we have to use Aquafina. You do not have to. It's just that's the that's the water bottle that we had laying out that was at room temperature. So I do like the water to be at room temperature whenever we mix it. So um, it actually does not have any smell. I wear my mask because of the dust that it makes. So after I get it all mixed up, I usually take my mask off because there's no more dust, but I don't wear it because of fumes. It actually doesn't have a smell. Um, so I just mix it really, really well and it's too thin at that point. I didn't like the way it looked. It was way too runny, so I added some more. And that's just kind of how I do it. I just eyeball it. <laughs> and I don't need to make an exact precise amount, um, so I just kind of eyeball it. And let's see here. Yep, I needed a little bit more. <laughs> and I'm really picky about the way it looks. So I'll, I'll do that for a little bit before I get it just absolutely perfect. And that's actually um, what we use is a paint mixer. We just use a paint mixer from, I think they have them at Walmart. And then that's how we mix it. 
and it looked a little thick to me at that point because I had overdone it. So then I went back and added just little bits of water, just one little capful at a time. It's that sensitive to get it the way you want it. And then we go ahead and we strain our glue. Um, I had a few comments about that. It doesn't say you have to, um, but I've just found that that's kind of the no hassle way to get it nice and smooth and not have to worry about it. And and there there are no clumps. So those are, I think they're paint filters from O'Reilly is where we get them. And looks like that's good to go. It takes a while to go through there because it is pretty thick glue. Um, and it does only have a 20 minute pot life. So once you mix it, you have 20 minutes to get it in the press and pressed. So it requires, for what we're doing, we put like 75 to 80 PSI on it for a prop that size. So we usually, um, I mix the glue while Katrina smooths it all out um, to make it go faster. It's not that it like necessarily takes two people to do this job. It just goes a lot faster and then we don't have to worry about the pot life of the glue. And we will then, um, so the little hole that she drilled earlier, we actually take a, <laughs> I think it's a, a clothes hanger wire and stick it through to center all the boards. And then we will clamp each end. And for this one, because it is so thick, I will pin it with dowel rods. Um, so I'll drill a hole at each end, and the hole that I drill is way past the actual diameter of the prop so that it's not, it's not ever part of the prop. It's way out of the way. And so I'll pin it and with dowel rods, and then we'll put it in the press. Um, for some of the smaller props, just like a two-boarded prop or a three-board prop, then I just put little bitty nails in the end. Um, it's a little quicker and easier than drilling the dowel rods. Um, as you see later in the video, we could not find the drill bit that I normally use, and we looked everywhere for it, and then we finally found one, and we found the dullest drill bit in the whole shop. <laughs> so it took me forever. I'm pretty sure I smoked through that, not, not actually drilled through it. <laughs> but, um, and I think, let's see, I think in here there's, my daughter runs through at one point. My brother came in at one point. You can probably see the dogs in here. Um, I bring my, my lab with me to work every day. And then most of the time I have my brother's dog as well. So we're, there's my little girl. So they didn't have school that day. So she was in and out of the shop running around and a lot of people ask if they're going to take over the business someday and i just tell them that whatever they want to do if they want to great and if they don't want to that's fine too i just want them to do what what is good for them oh yeah and that's my dad's dog lily we're, pre we're, we're very animal friendly <laughs> so there we are searching for the drill bit and there's my oldest So it took us a while, but we found one. <laughs> and I think the shop cat is in here too. It just showed up one day. And funny thing about that cat is uh, it loves to be pet. It wants to be pet so bad. It will even jump on you and climb you like a tree to be pet. And that hurts just about as bad as you're imagining it hurts. <laughs> so he stays outside a lot and sleeps inside. But there we go. We finally got that, got it drilled. And it also has to stay in the press for 14 hours. So there's, there's quite a bit of timeline on all of it, you know, getting it all glued up and pressed within 20 minutes and then it has to stay in the press at 75 to 80 PSI for 14 hours, you know, at the 70 degrees. So that's the one part you don't want to, I mean, you really don't want to screw that up. But um, I, 
on the days that, say, I forgot to turn the heat on or something like that, you can actually see where it delaminates and the glue doesn't bond the two pieces of wood together. And at that point, that's where our decor props come from. So you might see that I have decors on sale from time to time. And sometimes the gluing process not going well is what will lead one to be decor. Um, but most of the time, I, we're talking like maybe one, maybe two a year that, that don't glue properly. Um, but other than that, it usually does a good job. So. And there you go. That's actually a press and there's 18 wheeler airbags is what's used um, to create the pressure to press it. So. Just stick the air hose on there and you're good to go. And actually, when we bought the company, the previous owners did not even use this. And I can't imagine, <laughs> they just would put it in a box and screw it all down. I can't even imagine how long that would take compared to how quick and easy this is. So I'm super thankful for that piece of equipment every single day. Um, but that takes up day one of how to glue up a propeller and the next video will be day two. Thanks for watching.